And I think what you're describing is a good way to sometimes wrap your head about around trying to explain a very complex concept. So if you can discuss it with patients in the setting of, because of the GI dysmotility, you might have a delayed on time or delayed um, uh, reaction of your medications turning on. Because of the GI dysmotility, you might have an issue with the medications wearing off too soon. Because of the amount of time the medications are in and out of your system, you can talk about morning off periods or different types of off periods as well. Um, those might be ways in which you can help educate the patient as well as the caregiver as to what an off time might be. And then you can describe that into what the symptoms of those off periods might look like to them. So if you think about the idea of delayed, ac delayed onset as being under the off category or mor morning off period as an off category or wearing off before the next dose as an off category, those are three distinct episodes that you would be able to then have the discussion with the patients and the caregivers about, about what that might look like to them as far as their symptoms go, whether it's motor symptoms or non-motor symptoms for Parkinson's. Jill, you bring up this, this new way of thinking about off, because we're focused as a field on off time and six hours of off time when people enter trials and we reduce it by an hour and a half or two hours, but what is off time made up of? All these off episodes throughout the day, you know, the morning akinesia you point out, between doses, this dose or that dose, a mealtime dose with protein effect, it gets really complicated. And these off episodes begin with these initial symptoms of, of off, motor, non-motor, and they get worse and worse. They transition into a full off state and the medication's taken, but then they have to wait till it begins to work and then gradually have improvement and begin to turn on and finally they're on again. And you know, that the one study that was done uh, by Eldad Malamed's group that really demonstrated that the time for wearing off until the next dose was only about half the amount of time that patients actually took a dose and then waited for it to begin to work. And I think this is really a realization that makes us realize we don't only need medicines that work centrally to make levodopa doses last longer. We need medicines that can work quicker and more reliably by maybe non-oral means. Yeah, and I think again, it's a really important to emphasize because uh, again, I think both patients and many uh, neurologists think about um, off or even off episodes as this predictable sort of classic wearing off, you know, that sort of sine wave where the patient has been taking the medication or carbidopa, levodopa three times a day, let's say, you know, five to six hours apart, and now all of a sudden at hour four, it's, it's not working anymore. Um, and that is one very common type of off, this wearing off. But, you know, as Jill just described, there are multiple ways to think about off episodes. There's the morning akinesia, when the patient has woken up, they haven't had their first dose of levodopa yet, they're off. There's the patient who, uh, you know, probably related to the gut, as you brought up. They take their medicine and it never turns on, right? Why? Maybe they had it with too much protein, there's competition, maybe there was gastroparesis, it fails to move forward. Then there's the completely unpredictable off, and I don't think we know the mechanism of that. I mean, so. There are multiple, maybe simultaneous in the same patient. And I guess you know, for the practical application, how do you talk to the patient? How do you get this information in? Uh, it's nice to ask the question, do you have motor fluctuations, but don't assume the answer when it comes back yes is that you or the patient have any inkling of whether it's one or multiple mechanisms. It'd be nice if there was a simple form that someone could fill out before coming into your office where it's all laid out. We try that in our clinic, but I think it's a conversation. It's an ongoing dialogue that creates the notion of what can you try among the armamentarium of medications or just counseling on what to do with meals, what to do with the timing of medication, how to deal with that bad day versus the rest of the week where they're doing well and put that information together in a synthesis that leads to practical things to try. And often it's multi-step and it's a titration process and it's feedback from the patient that makes the decisions of what to do really happen. And that's, that's a burden on the physician who likes to think that you can make a decision on the spot. It's obviously this, it's obviously that, but it's often possibly several things going on in terms of mechanisms. And the thing is, uh, you know, we talk about patient getting up in the morning and being off. Of course, some of the people wake up in the morning and that's their best time of the day. But, but the other challenge we and patients and other physicians have is what is delayed on, right? I mean, we talk about delayed on because whenever a patient gets up in the morning and takes the pill, 
it is going to take a while for the, uh, the dopamine to get to the brain, so to speak. But practically, if I look at it, and, and I know, Stu, you did that early morning study, but in clinics, I say if someone says this takes more than 30 minutes for their morning dose to work, to me, you know, we need to look at another way to get them going faster. And then I have patients who say it takes until they take their second dose before they get going. And, and I think that's an important thing to check with the patient how long their first dose takes to get going. Because really someone saying, I don't get on until I take my second dose, that should not be happening. Yeah. You know, pa patients may think it's 30 minutes, but when we actually had them go home and do a diary, it wound up being 45 minutes or an hour. And remarkably, many patients had dose failure the first dose and didn't even report it. So it's not just wearing off or delayed on, sometimes a suboptimal on or a no on this dose failure idea. And it can be very hard for patients to understand these types of varying degrees of how well they respond to a single dose, and that every day is different. Right. And you have the morning time, you have meal time, and doses may work differently. So it probably isn't this sinusoidal, as Dan, you point out. It's probably this jagged mountain range, and every day is a different pattern. Every day and every dose, right?